weird Russian weapons. For centuries, the Russian Empire, followed by the Soviet Union and the Russian Federation, had fought the Western powers for global domination. In this struggle, the act of warfare was usually the most effective tool. That was why the Russians paid great attention to their weapon production. Some of the best weapons the world has ever seen were dreamt up in Russian design bureaus. However, the Russian engineers were known to experiment here and there, and sometimes create something that could possibly give the nation an edge over their rivals. Very often, these experiments resulted in some rather unusual weapons. These are some of the weirdest Russian weapons. The PSS Silent Pistol The PSS Silent Pistol, or the Pistolet Specialnish Samozoraisnish, is an unusual type of weapon. Described as going beyond being silent, the PSS is a pistol constructed entirely differently from other silent pistols. What's unique about the pistol is that it has no silencer. Instead, it uses the special SP4 noiseless ammunition. The 7.62mm by 41mm necked round SP4 ammo consists of a reinforced steel cartridge case with a powder charge and a special piston inside. The expanding gases drive the piston forward against the mild steel cylindrical bullet within the cartridge when the pistol is fired. Once the bullet leaves the cartridge, the piston seals it, leaving all gases inside. This way, the cartridge produces no sound, blast, or smoke. The PSS is designed to use the SP4 ammo only. The magazine holds six rounds, which are fed into a chamber using a self-loading principle. Another unique feature of the pistol is that the chamber is separated from the barrel, which moves rearward along the recoiling slide. The slide has a built-in stop that slows it down in order not to create any sound. With the noiseless ammunition and the special firing mechanism, the sound generated by the pistol upon firing is quieter than a hand clap. The pistol has a relatively small range of 50 meters, however the round is only effective at a distance of 25 meters, at which it can still penetrate a soldier's steel helmet. Because the pistol was built for use in covert operations and assassinations, the short range is not really an issue. The pistol's primary purpose is to conceal its operator's whereabouts. The pistol was produced in the famous Tula Arms plant, and it was first issued in 1983 to the KGB Spetsnaz units, and has been used by various Soviet and Russian special and secret service units ever since. The APS Underwater Rifle Another weapon in the arsenal of the unusual Russian weapons is the APS Underwater Rifle, or the Avtomat Podvodny Spetsyalny. The APS is an AK family assault rifle especially designed for submerged use. Introduced in the mid-1970s, it was developed for underwater operations by Soviet frogmen. Up until that period, the frogmen were only armed with knives. The APS rifle allowed them to engage with their enemy from longer distances. The rifle's construction was based on a standard gas-operated mechanism that was adapted for use in underwater conditions. The barrel was smooth, and a gas tube was perforated, allowing the water to get in. Unlike standard AK assault rifles, the APS fires from an open bolt to enable the barrel to fill with water constantly. The water in the barrel was necessary to stabilize the projectile. Since using conventional rounds underwater was pointless, considering that they lose their trajectory and penetration capabilities after only 3 meters, the APS was designed to fire special 5.66mm rounds with 120mm long steel darts. The round had standard 5.66mm by 39mm cases, sealed from water and filled with special propellants for underwater conditions. The long needle-shaped rounds allowed the frogmen to shoot underwater targets at distances of 98 feet, or 30 meters, at a depth of 16 feet, or 5 meters. However, the weapon's effective range drops with increased depth and the pressure in the water. At a depth of 131 feet, the range is almost three times shorter, 36 feet, or 11 meters. The rifle operates in semi- and fully-auto modes. It can fire outside the water, which is not recommended because it damages both the barrel and the mechanism and will diminish the rifle's service life. The rifle has a rather crude appearance and is distinctive for an unusually large magazine made from polymer that holds 26 rounds. However, despite the odd look, the APS underwater rifle is a reliable and effective underwater weapon. 
Apart from the former Soviet and present Russian armed forces, the gun is in use in the armies of 12 other nations. But now, let's dedicate a moment to thank our sponsor, Magellan TV. Enjoy outstanding on-demand video streaming service Magellan TV with over 3,000 documentaries, movies, and series, with many available at 4K high def. And watch their newest documentary, Digging for Britain. Watch this fantastic story about archaeological excavations of Vindolenda, a Roman auxiliary fort south of Hadrian's Wall in northern England. From an Iron Age chariot to Viking treasures, from Roman burials to World War II relics, these excavations discover remarkable collections of incredibly preserved wooden artifacts, clothing, military equipment, tools, and pottery. These latest discoveries are rewriting history. Sign up for the Magellan TV streaming service as it exemplifies the great traditions of documentary filmmaking. The quest to capture unique imagery, venture into the unknown, and tell compelling stories based on the insights of historians, scientists, and explorers. Simple History viewers can get a one-month free trial to make sure you love what Magellan TV has to offer. Click the link in the description to try Magellan TV now. The Tsar Tank One of the most awkward Russian weapons ever was the gigantic Tsar Tank. It was an armored vehicle with a pretentious name, odd appearance, and almost no positive features. The Tsar Tank was not even a tank in terms of the standard tank concept. Instead, it was a huge gun carriage with an armored turret on top. At the time, Western countries were developing armored vehicles with Caterpillar tracks. The Russians got an idea to build a vehicle with wheels so large that it could handle any kind of terrain or obstacle. The result was the Tsar tank at 17.8 meters long, 9 meters high, and 12 meters wide. The gun carriage looking vehicle had spiked wheels that were 9 meters in diameter. On top of the carriage, there were four turrets, the central turret, belly turret, and two flank turrets. The turrets on the side were armed with two 76.2 millimeter guns, while the turrets in the middle were equipped with eight to 10 Maxim 7.62 millimeter machine guns. The vehicle not only looked awkward, but also had a large amount of weak points. One of the most important was the vulnerability of the spike wheels, and their size interfered with the gun shooting trajectories. The tank would have probably never reached the trial stage if Tsar Nicholas II Romanov hadn't been so delighted with the scale model of the tank he was presented with. However, when the tank was brought out for a test run in front of a group of army dignitaries, it was a huge disappointment. The 60-ton tank got stuck in the mud. Its tiny rear wheels and the poor weight distribution made it bogged down in the rough and muddy soil, which was so typical of the landmass of Russia. The long-awaited wonder weapon that was to have given the Russian forces an advantage on the battlefield ended up on the scrap heap in 1923. The Antonov A-40 Flying Tank Tanks evolved a lot between the two world wars, especially their tactical deployment. By the time World War II started, military strategists had been thinking about various methods of how they could be delivered to the battlefield. One idea was by dropping them in from the air. The Soviets, along with other countries, had their own development program for airborne tanks. They conducted a couple of experiments for this purpose, of which the most interesting was the tank glider design. Behind this idea was the legendary Soviet airplane designer Oleg Antonov. He envisioned delivering light tanks to battlefields or even behind enemy lines by attaching wings to them. The T-60 Light Scout tank was adopted for this purpose. Antonov fitted it with a detachable cradle bearing large biplane wings made of wood and fabric with a twin tail. The wings were pretty large, with a wingspan of 18 meters. In essence, this was a glider with a tank in the front instead of a cockpit. Even though it was an interesting concept, it proved to be unworkable, which became evident during the trials on September 2, 1942, when a TB-3 bomber towed the A-40 flying tank. To function properly, the bomber had to tow the glider at a speed of 100 miles per hour, or 160 kilometers per hour. Considering the weight of the T-60 tank, this was virtually impossible. Nevertheless, the bomber managed to get the A-40 airborne, but had a lot of trouble towing it. In the end, the bomber pilot had to release the A-40. Surprisingly, the tank glided smoothly down to Earth and landed in a field not far from the airport, from where it was driven back to the base. However, the project was abandoned after the first trial, primarily for the towing problems. Apart from that, the concept had other issues. The tank had to be stripped of ammunition and some fuel to make it lighter. 
these things were dropped separately, which meant a delay in combat deployment until the crew located all their ammo and fuel. Another essential drawback was that by 1942, the T-60 was already an obsolete tank with weak armor and an even weaker armament. After only one trial, the development of the A-40 was abandoned, as due to the ongoing war, the Soviets had no time to waste on unfeasible projects. The Tu-2SH Fiery Hedgehog The number of various weapon experiments during World War II was astonishing. Belligerents were doing their best to gain the upper hand in the war, and the Soviets were no exception. As the war progressed, the Red Army was slowly taking the initiative on the Eastern Front. By 1944, their armored units were in full swing, and their air force had established supremacy in the air. One of the aircraft that played a key role in the Red Army's success was the Tupolev Tu-2. Even though it was designed as a dive bomber, the Tu-2 often provided fire support to infantry units on the ground, with its two 20mm Shivek cannons and three 12.7mm Berens and UB machine guns. In 1944, an idea was developed by the Tupolev Design Bureau to create a new version of the Tu-2 aircraft for its infantry support role. This version was named the Tu-2SH and was also known as the Fiery Hedgehog and had a weapon battery cassette installed in the bomb bay containing 88 PPSH-41 submachine guns. Arranged in 11 rows, each with 8 guns, every PPSH gun had a standard 71-round drum magazine fitted. With the PPSH's astounding rate of fire of 1,250 rounds per minute, the Tu-2SH could deliver 6,248 steel cord incendiary rounds in less than 4 seconds. The area covered by this fire was 550 meters long by 1.2 meters wide, so it would have been perfect for attacking supply columns on the road or railway trains. Unfortunately, as the guns were firing all those rounds, they were also spewing out an equal number of empty shell cases, which could fly into and damage the engines. Even though it provided some impressive firepower, the Tu-2SH had several limitations that prevented it from entering service. The combined battery of submachine guns would expend its total capacity of ammunition in such a short amount of time that it took 100 man-hours to reload it when the plane landed because every drum magazine had to be detached from its gun and reloaded with ammunition by hand. Apart from that, the effective range of the PPSH-41 required the Tu-2SH pilot to fly at altitudes of less than 244 meters. At this height, the aircraft was vulnerable to enemy anti-aircraft and small arms fire. Finally, it was estimated that small-caliber cluster bombs had a more devastating effect against enemy troops, including armored targets, the Fiery Hedgehog therefore remained just another exciting experiment.